Hi folks, and welcome back to The Plot on what is an absolutely gorgeous day. Despite the lovely, lovely blue skies, however, <laughs> it is freezing. It is really, really windy and it is absolutely freezing outside, which is why <laughs> I'm hiding in the greenhouse and saying hello to you all from the shelter and safety of this warm little refuge. But that said, I am still missing this pane of glass. <laughs> and the weather all week has just been a bit rubbish, so I've not been up too much, but I do still have lots to update you on. And there's a few jobs that hopefully I'm going to get done today. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Shall we just get stuck in and get started? See how it goes. <laughs> so let's start off with the thing I'm most excited about. As you know, I like to garden with fairly messy beds. I don't really have any borders. I don't love the idea of having wooden edges because they're a real harbour for slugs and snails. But what it means is that all of the grass that I have along the edge is quite hard to control. And the only means I have of controlling it is a petrol strimmer, which I have to bring up in the car. And it's a whole faff, a whole ordeal. Um, it's really heavy <laughs> and it's not very much fun to use. So this year I've got a secret weapon. So here we have it, my petrol mower from home, and I'm hoping this is gonna make life so much easier, but I did have to think a little bit before bringing this up and making the decision to leave it on the plot. And there's a, I, I would say two main things to be mindful of. The first is that it's pretty likely to get nicked. <laughs> if I leave this up here for long enough, it will probably go missing. And this is a tired old beast, okay? We got it secondhand. It's got a fuel leak. It does, it's really temperamental. Uh, it doesn't work if the air filter is on. <laughs> the blade on the bottom is uh, kind of like the attachment doesn't work properly, so sometimes it comes off. <laughs> it's got quite a few issues with it, and if it does get nicked, it's not the end of the world. It's not worth much money. But I wouldn't be leaving a brand new one on the plot, I can tell you that. The other thing, and the thing I'm more worried about, is the risk of vandalism. You know, you do see and hear about people's sheds getting burnt down. And so for that reason, I won't be leaving any petrol in the shed ever. <laughs> but that said, there will still be some in the fuel tank. So if someone was really determined, you could just do some damage. So, um, you know, I had to be mindful of that. But I think, <laughs> to be honest, if someone burnt my shed down, they'd be doing me a favour. <laughs> um, <laughs> because that thing is a liability. But the thing I am most excited about, now I will be able to actually collect the grass clippings properly. With the strimmer, I usually left it too long. You know, I didn't strim at a good time. And so it, the grass was super long and it doesn't compost down very well. If I can be mowing more regularly and collecting loads more grass clippings, then I should be doing my compost bins a real favor. And as well, I can mow a few of the communal paths, mow next door's paths as well, and collect a bit more grass that way. I'm not gonna get this started just yet. It's very temperamental, but at the end of the episode, I will give it a whip round because there's already quite a lot of grass growth. So I spent a lot of time recently talking about preparing the beds to get everything ready and the year is progressing, but it's still quite early. Saying that though, I have got my first thing in the bed and it's very, very exciting whenever you get your first thing in the ground, but these are my problem crop and it is my onion sets. I'm really bad at growing onions from seed. You have to start them really early and <laughs> they're really done very well. So sets are always the easiest option for me and I always just kind of pick up something that I see in the shop. And what I've done this year is put a few onions everywhere <laughs> because I suffer with onion white rot on the plot. It's just always a gamble. It seemed to have very local hotspots in the beds. And as far as I can tell, it's all over the allotment. If I really wanted a, a completely like sterile growing environment, I could maybe build a bed, dig out the topsoil, replace it all with compost, but eventually the white rot would probably get in there anyway. And it's more effort than it's worth for a few onions really. So what I've done, I've got a little line here and I've got about five other lines all over the allotment. A lot more than I would normally sow, but that's just because it was a big pack. But um, we'll keep an eye on them and see how they go as the season progresses. And hopefully I'll have another really good onion crop because I did get quite lucky last year. One thing just worth quickly mentioning, you will have seen, you know, the allotment is not looking too nice at the moment, but we have some really good news because all of the grass seed that I sowed here where I restructured the beds, this is starting to take, I think. I assume it's the grass seed anyway. <laughs> I hope it's not something else, but give it a little while. And when this is, you know, looking really nice, I think it will change the character of the allotment quite a bit and it will be nice having a central path to the greenhouse. And with the mower, 
I should be able to keep it quite neat and tidy. That's the theory anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about the broccoli because I can see that and uh, I've got an issue. Well, I actually have a few issues. Uh, the first is quite a funny one. <laughs> funny and frustrating at the same time. And I've realized that this netting that I put on, brand new, just a few weeks ago, <laughs> is too big. <laughs> My fun discovery for today is the uh... <laughs> The new netting that I put on <laughs> so good. It's, uh, it's too big. <laughs> the butterflies can apparently fly right through this one. So, uh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so it keeps the pigeons off, but um, I've already seen a few cabbage white butterflies doing their thing and uh, not a good sign. It's not the end of the world for these plants. You know, if these get a few caterpillars on, it doesn't really matter because they're coming to the end of their season now, but it will be an issue if I try and use this netting again for next year. So <laughs> I've got to find some new netting. And as well, this netting is absolute crap <laughs> because not only is it too big, but it's also already ripped down in this corner. It's got a, here it is, a fresh hole already. So, um, you know, it's just really flimsy, breaks really easily. Um, very, very upsetting. The second issue, Upsetting is a bit dramatic, but the second issue I have is white fly. So hopefully you can see we've still got a lot of broccoli heads coming, but I've also been harvesting this quite heavily. It really did all crop at once, so <laughs> I've got a bit of a glut. I've been blanching and freezing, but the white fly I am finding are not so much of an issue on the new heads. Most of the heads that are ready to harvest are completely clear, which is um, quite fortunate really but I've found that they have really made an impact further down the plants. You can just about see in there sort of in the nooks and crannies further down the plant I'm finding some pretty significant numbers which is not a good sign. It's going to cut these plants season short because soon enough all of those white fly will be all over the heads. You can see as well a few of these that I've missed harvesting are just starting to go to flower now so I need to get on top of harvesting these but it's very difficult <laughs> when you've already got so much. I harvested literally over a kilogram <laughs> just the other day in one go so uh, yeah a real shame that these have all come to fruition at the same time and later on in the year when I'm planting my broccoli out I'm definitely going to stagger it a bit in the hopes that come harvest time we won't get such a glut. And for me, the white fly are just kind of an inconvenience. I'm not gonna go overboard trying to get rid of them at this point. The plants are kind of coming to the end of the season. They'll have a few weeks more harvesting in them. But if it's the start of the harvesting season for you or your plants aren't ready yet, I would definitely be checking for white fly because they've done really well where we've had that really nice mild start to spring. They might get hit back a little bit. Now we've got a few frosts and some snow on the way as well. So that's the broccoli. I feel like my hands are turning blue. It really is very cold. I don't know if you can hear that wind, but it is horrible today. Most of the beds looking a little bit messy, but okay. Oh my goodness, it is freezing. You can see all the grass tufts that I was talking about. And I do still want to create a bit of a meadow under the, under the orchard, but uh, my plans have changed regarding yellow rattle. I'll, I'll talk about that soon, I'm sure. There's not really anything I can be planting out into the beds just yet. Um, the strawberry bed looking much better, been giving everything just a bit of a weed. Uh, fortunately, the bindweed hasn't started to poke through the ground yet, so that's nice. But one big thing I have been thinking an awful lot about is the shed. <laughs> so here we are in the shed, and you guys never get to see this. I'll show you a little clip now of what it actually looks like in here, but it is a complete mess. And this is it looking good after the skip came the other day and I emptied it from a load of stuff. But yes, it's falling down. You will have seen from outside. The roof especially is a liability. Um, it's extremely soft and the whole, <laughs> the whole thing honestly feels like it could go. The floor is really bad because there's just so much water that comes in here um, and it's all just slowly rotting. So long-term aspiration is definitely rebuilding this. And uh, speaking of aspirations, the one thing that I really wish I had at the allotment is a place to come and have a cup of tea. <laughs> I really want to put in a window, have a kettle in here, and especially on a day like this where it's freezing cold, it would be so nice to actually have somewhere to shelter. 
And the issue isn't with building the shed. I would really enjoy building a shed. I think it would be a really, really good job to have, and I'd love to film it and do some episodes on it. But the issue is just cost. And investment in allotments is tricky because you don't know how long you're going to keep the plot. I've been doing a lot of planning. Uh, I've you know, sketched up some designs for the shed and done some costings. And it's really difficult to get one of these for under four figures at the moment. Um, and that's building it yourself, you know, so something solid that's going to last pretty expensive and most of that cost comes from cladding so this has got plywood on it at the moment back here and it's all falling apart i think it's hardwood plywood and looking at redoing this with simla would be about 400 pounds looking at doing it with you know shiplap cladding like on most sheds is even more expensive you're looking at five or six hundred pounds at the moment it's absolutely bonkers so it's big big money but if I was going to be here for a really long time, is it worth it? I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. I would love to do it, but um, time will tell. I'm going to have to do something about this shed soon because it will fall down. <laughs> anyway, that was a lot of shed talk, wasn't it? I had a few comments recently asking for more information and thoughts on the shed. So <laughs> there you go. If you wanted that, you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing to talk about before we finish, I think, today is just a quick update on the seedlings. These are looking much the same. The Allium's germination is absolutely rubbish. My spring onions here at the front haven't done anything at all. And the winter leeks at the back, not looking good. The autumn leeks, okay, but uh, yeah, a bit of an issue. Brassicas looking really healthy. They're coming along fine. My salad leaves, they're going to get a successional sowing today. The peas, I've done their successional sowing. You can see at the back, I've just dumped the propagator lid on it in hopes that they'll start to come up because it's been a week now and they've not done their thing. And down here, I've got a little tray with the leftover onion sets because I thought, why not? Um, I had them going. I thought I'd stick them in here just because I could. And it's quite likely that a few of the sets will get pulled out by birds or foxes. So the plan is I'll be able to replace them with these. Can you hear that wind? The whole greenhouse is shaking right now. Good Lord. Um, so they're the seedlings. And I do have over on the potting bench, a few things going on over here. Um, and these are various flowers, essentially. So I can't remember what I've sown <laughs> and nothing really has germinated yet. Apart from over here, my calendula seeds started going. So these were all the ones I collected from last season. And I really want to have a good showing of calendula. I spoke about those on Niall's channel recently. Hopefully you saw that. Um, so that's a really good sign. But the rest are lots of other things that I've never grown before uh, that we had lying about in pots. And um, some of them will be pricked out and put into other things. But I think this hopefully will be a really nice showing. And I'll be able to put this out somewhere in the allotment. So that's where we are at the start of April. I think it's looking pretty good. I think I had a bit of a realization the other day that or for, for two years now I've had the plot and there's always been a big looming job, you know, something big that I had to do or something big that I had to change. And I don't have any of those anymore. It's got to the point where I can really relax and stop worrying, <laughs> apart from about the shed <laughs> behind me. <laughs> Literally just looked and saw that and went, oh yeah, maybe not. But everything else is pretty much, you know, it's got to the point where the allotment is kind of starting to look after itself. I just need to come up and do the maintenance. And I've got a much better idea of what I'm doing with sewing now. I still haven't planned what's going where in the big beds, but I'm just going to kind of make it up as I go along this year, I think. And it should, it should be fine, shouldn't it? <laughs> so it's started snowing. It's actually snowing a little bit. Just, we only ever get sleet here. Ah, it's in my ear. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to quickly, hopefully, get the mower going. And uh, then I think I'm going to run away because <laughs> it's so cold. It's always the worst trying to get this going <laughs> after it's spent the entire winter in a shed. <laughs> Let's see. That is the quickest it's ever got going. believe that worked so quickly this is definitely going to be a massive improvement so thank you all so much for watching i'm going to carry on get the rest of the plot looking a little bit nicer hopefully i'll see you again next time